Balderstone Hornibrook has been one of the most diversified and innovative companies in the construction industry over the past decade. Their continual commitment and professional management skills have set a precedent within this highly competitive industry. Past construction projects cover a wide range of responsibilities and criteria, from the magnificent Opera House overlooking Sydney Harbour and the Convention Centre, part of the impressive Darling Harbour Complex. In Adelaide, there's the Oban Busway, the longest guided bus system in the world. The Convention Centre within the ASA Complex. An Olympic Swimming Centre at North Adelaide. And the innovative 12-level Commonwealth Office Centre featuring a spectacular atrium. Highlighting local achievements, Balderstones were appointed construction managers to the State Bank Centre, Adelaide's most prestigious building, and the city's architectural showpiece. The philosophy and teamwork provided a structure of experience where company personnel planned and evaluated the most economical solutions during all stages of construction. One such stage was the evaluation of the type of facade for the North Plaza entry, and the final design decision was a precast concrete portal beam. This particular project was, in fact, quite unique. The lifting of a concrete beam, 90 tons in weight, and of this size and complexity, had never been done before in Australia. However, the solution provided a number of key advantages. Apart from the dimensional accuracy achieved through casting the beam off-site, significant savings in time and cost were identified. Additionally, the nuisance and hazards to public, as with normal on-site construction, would be minimal. And because other works would proceed in the North Plaza entry without interruption, an estimated six weeks would be gained on the project completion date. The success of this project was a result of the leadership skills of the Balderstone Hornibrook project team and specialist consultants for the design and engineering, the lifting study, the manufacture, the transport, and finally, the lift. The heritage significance of the boundary buildings created a challenge for Woods Baggett architects. To design a facade that would be sympathetic with the historic buildings and blend with the modern streamlined exterior of the State Bank Centre. The precasting of the beam off-site enabled a higher quality of finish and dimensional accuracy. In addition, this design provided a cavity for exhaust gases. We have always uh, recognised that this portion of the site uh, was the area in which we would bring the exhaust through to the open air. The opportunity in designing a precast box facade uh, was given to us to uh, incorporate the exhaust coming through from the basement uh, into the eastern column uh, through the entablature and to exhaust equipment which will be mounted in the area of the Commonwealth Banking Building. It became more evident that history books were being rewritten as this precast concrete beam would be the largest single component of its type to be manufactured off-site and transported to a building site within a central business district anywhere in Australia. The engineering calculations and drawings by Kinhill engineers became the final formula towards the process of manufacture. Well, the element is very simple in the sense that there's, uh, if we're talking about the very large elements, there's only really one beam and two columns. And on the face of it, that isn't very difficult to design. But most engineers, of course, aren't familiar with, with objects on this sort of scale. And the, the hard part about it is when you're lifting it, how to get the lifting forces out of the very thin elements that one has to use in order to keep the weight down. And when you sit it on its final columns, once again, you've got to get the, the forces out of some very thin elements and into the columns and down to the ground. That's the difficult part of the, the engineering associated with this. Concrete is a material that's a bit different to designing than structural steel. Concrete can only really take compression forces, whereas structural steel can take either compression or tension forces. So what we had to do in designing those anchorages, which are used for lifting, was to use the compressive capacity of the concrete 
in, in rather a different way than is allowed for in any of the design codes of the moment. And we designed that element as though it were a concrete truss in which the concrete forms the struts that take compression and the extra reinforcement that we added uh, is the tension members of the truss that take the tension. The lifting study by Aztec Analysis formed most of the foundation for the total project. A number of key areas were initially identified for further attention prior to commencement of detailed project planning. These areas consisted of availability and type of cranes, availability and type of transport, makeup of site labour, authority approvals, insurance provisions, construction of beam and monitoring weight, preparation of Curry Street, Bureau of Meteorology information on winds. On closer inspection and understanding the geometry of the system, we recommended that four cranes should be used as a minimum, even though it might appear to be more cost involved. On balance, it gave a safer solution and in all respects, divided the loads and uh, prevented overload of cranes. Following the decision to use two cranes of 90 ton capacity and two of 45 ton capacity, an additional diaphragm was introduced into the beam. The system we devised is effectively a load sharing device which split the load from these two lift points and then at each point divided it here in such a way that the cranes were taking a calculated amount of load. In fact, the load division is statically determinant and that means that you can say with confidence, providing the beams stay level, that you can, you can say with confidence how much each crane is taking in terms of load. In essence, the weight of the beam will be transferred through two 50mm steel plates and sleeves cast into the beam's diaphragms. These then engage the swaged ends of the two 65mm diameter wire rope slings, which connected to the lifting beams with 75 ton rated shackles. Both of these lifting beams, as with all elements of the lifting gear, were tested to above maximum load requirements. Balderstone's role in managing and coordinating the teamwork ensured a smooth flow on at each stage of the project. Their leadership skills during pre-work and project critique provided the formula for the project by the way of a responsibility action list. This listing incorporated a total planning control and project feedback for consultants, construction personnel and statutory authorities. The whole project uh, created the conditions that every uh, individual that uh, was involved with it was challenged and they were all encouraged to excel in their particular tasks. These management responsibilities also required approvals and cooperation from the Adelaide City Council, the Highways Department and the Electricity Trust of South Australia. Conforming to Fire Department regulations, approvals were qualified in the event of an emergency. Finally, the task of insurance in the areas of public and property liability and road and equipment damage completed the major administrative documentation. Special clauses in the insurance policy also covered the four cranes, backup drivers and the trial lift. Consideration was given to coverage in the event that the lift would be aborted due to wind speeds greater than 10 knots. Full cooperation with Department of Labor approvals, always high on the list of criteria with Ballastone management, has provided the company with an excellent record of industrial relations that most other companies envy. As with all construction projects, the concern of safety was greatly reduced through planning and total control set up with a core group of key company personnel and specialist consultants. The beam, because of its sheer size and weight, was to be constructed in six major sections in the pre-casting workshop at Constress. This component preparation also allowed a greater control in quality for the surface finish. 
Attention to detail in the preparation of reinforcing material as it was laid in the concreter's largest casting beds was closely monitored by engineering personnel. This process provided reasonably quick turnaround as each finished panel was cured, the next was being prepared. A constant quality control check during the manufacturing process of the beam provided assurance for required standards. On the completion of all six side panels, they were supported on a casting bed for the knitting together process. The beam is constructed of 11 precast elements. Uh, there are six sides of the beam, and those six sides were precast and stood up and infilled in between those elements with concrete to hold the elements together. Uh, the ends and the diaphragms were then constructed and stood up, and, and again they were in situ joints were poured. And the last process was to pour the floor and the roof of the beam. The two columns were constructed in four main sections. Each side was prepared on casting beds, similar to the process for the beam. On completion of the sides, they were placed back on the casting bed, supported in an upright position, ready for the pouring of the floor. There were two elements poured every day, and uh, they were lifted the following day, so we steam cure overnight, such that you can uh, lift the units the next day, and could be erected the next day. After curing, formwork was placed in this section, and the top side was poured. Both columns were then transported to the site area by semi-trailer, fixed and braced in the upright position, in readiness for the final stage. The transportation of the beam was on a specialised Brambles 96-wheel hydraulically operated trailer. We had the trailer brought to Adelaide for this specific move. Uh, the trailer is a, is a 12 line Nicholas French trailer. Uh, it's got 12 rows of 8 axles. It's got 96 wheels uh, and it weighs in the vicinity of 50 tonnes. The final configuration for transport to the site, including the two prime movers, was 45 metres long and weighed approximately 205 tonnes. The first part of the journey started around midnight Friday and travelling at 5 kilometres an hour, the estimated time for arrival in the city would be approximately 5 a.m. Saturday. The original schedule was to take us uh, four hours from Constress's yard to the State Bank site in Curry Street now, this was greatly reduced uh, in the time frame owing to the fact of the cooperation we received from ETSA, the police, the highways department and our own side of things. In actual fact, the journey was completed in two and a half hours, arriving in Light Square at 3 a.m. The trial lift at the construction yard proved the initial lifting procedure and the final lift would be a matter of following the procedure exactly. We had to establish a detailed lifting procedure and instruct each crane driver in his responsibilities. We had to establish a management um, organisation with one man nominated as lifting superintendent who would control the lift and those drivers would take their instructions from that man and no one else. The final lift program was scheduled to take place during Saturday and Sunday. On Saturday morning, final checks and preparation of the footpath areas were well underway. A little after lunch, Curry Street was completely closed on the southern side to enable the rigging of the cranes to proceed. Each crane was carefully rigged and checked before moving into the lift area. To enable accurate cross-checking of wind direction and speed, this wind vane was mounted on top of the Balderstone crane. Good weather was uh, absolutely uh, paramount. Uh, we've, uh, the consulting engineers put a, a uh, restriction on the lift uh, to a wind speed of 10 knots, and uh, whilst we uh, gathered all the uh, information we could from the uh, uh, Bureau, there's an uh, enormous amount of chance still. In fact, the uh, um, uh, conditions that gave uh, uh, 
wind speeds of less than 10 knots were one in three for this, for this particular time of the year, and for a, a zero wind speed is uh, uh, about one in 30. By late afternoon, all cranes had manoeuvred into the first lift position. And as the crowd of onlookers grew, the beam was finally moved into position. There seemed to be a mixed feeling of tension and excitement from the public, as for the first time, the size of this lift became evident, with four huge cranes about to lift this mammoth concrete beam off the transport unit. However, the team of specialist personnel gathered for this project continued to do their task with the experience and professional approach as with all projects. Gradually, the beam was lifted and the transporter moved away. Slowly, the beam was moved to its first resting position and placed on the prepared platform area on the footpath. Department of Labor were concerned at one stage of the enormous lift we were going to do with four cranes. Uh, you must understand you've only got to have a mishap with one crane going wrong and you could have a big problem. So we had to work pretty close with them. Uh, we had to submit all the drawings calculations to the Department of Labor. Uh, they came through and, and gave us a clearance providing we adopted certain you know, avenues. And it sort of went from there without a hitch. The cranes now moved into their second position to lift the beam into the next resting place prior to the final lift on Sunday morning. As the late afternoon approached, final checks were made and the crane secured for the night. In the very early hours of Sunday morning, under the glowing lights strung around the site area, work crews began setting up platforms to maneuver the cranes into the final lift position. By first light at 6.30 a.m., the lifting rigging was being fitted to each crane and shackled onto the slings in the beam. The lift was underway as the lifting tension was taken up by each crane driver. As each set of drivers received instructions from the lift superintendent, the beam gradually rose above the ground towards its final resting place on top of the columns. I don't think uh, any time I had concern, providing everybody done their share, and providing the things were set up right and we followed the procedures. Uh, it was never a cause for anxiety, it was only mainly the timing. Here, at the height of its travel, the clearance of the boom was extremely tight. And that was our major concern with this lift, that if there should be some lack of coordination between the four crane drivers, or a gust of wind, an excessive gust of wind, or some other problem, and the, boot, and the load should swing, we could not risk that the load would touch the booms. By 8.45 a.m., the beam was being lowered onto the top of the columns, and the welders moved in to secure the beam to the plaza roof steel structure. This final two-hour lift, seemingly uneventful, was the culmination of three months' concentrated effort to complete a job which in itself required a great deal of experience initiative and innovation. It's the type of thing that doesn't happen every day and uh, it's got everyone excited from a logistics point of view to, uh, to try and uh, work out a method, a safe method of transporting a, a, a load of this nature into the city area. I think it was a result of an extraordinary amount of careful planning, attention to detail and safety aspects. It was really good to see um, the cranes all together and the whole group working as a team, you know, as if everyone was employed by one person, which everyone was basically contractors to each other. All the uh, uh, people, both internal and external, and in particular uh, Brambles, both in the transport um, and the crane they supplied, and SES uh, for the uh, crane that they uh, supplied on the day and the, and the crane that the Tadano that was uh, on standby. Uh, entered into uh, a partnership with, uh, with Border Stones and, and uh, became very willing uh, members of the team. The team was a, uh, a complete unit and it has been for the uh, whole of the project. Teamwork and professionalism all the way down the line, yeah. I think it'll probably stand as a milestone for some time. It takes a bit of bravado, I think, to, to tackle a structure like this and to get it into place.
the success of the lift has shown outstanding physical performance, proved the quality of the Ballerstone project team, and enhanced the strength of our relationship with our client. All participants have every reason to be very proud of their achievement. And that all died.